Agent Deneng, 1975, the end of the American presence in Vietnam. Refugees scrambled aboard the last plane out. In those final frantic days, we took more than 100,000 of them back to the United States. We thought our responsibility was over, or at least we hoped. The South China Sea, 1978. A boatload of Vietnamese refugees at the end of a 300-mile journey from Vietnam to the eastern coast of Malaysia. The exodus continues. They come ashore at the rate of 10,000 a month, much faster than the United States or any other nation is willing to accept it. They come chasing an elusive memory, the promise of America. Until we decide what to do about them, or until our laws are changed, the refugees face an uncertain future. They have applied I'm Ed Bradley. One month ago, I went back to Southeast Asia to meet the people we left behind but cannot escape, the boat people. CBS reports with Ed Bradley, the boat people. At first, it's hard to make out a speck on the horizon. You take a closer look. A boat, a flag, an arm waving. A crowd gathers along the beach. This is the east coast of Malaysia. Final destination, thousands of refugees fleeing Vietnam. Many don't make it this far. They're attacked by pirates, drowned, or starved to death. These have made it. Will the Malaysian police turn them away? Or will they be stoned by local villagers? The crowd waits to see how many will survive this time. Only a few fishermen help the boat people ashore. We joined in. Tell, no one drowned coming ashore. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And just for that, some were grateful. Thank you, no one. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Very, very much. Thank you very much. Do you speak English at all? I live in Vietnam. Vietnam, good city. Yeah. I can speak English and French. Uh, where where do you come from? Uh, I come from um, Vietnam. What city? Oh, the, in the capital, you know, in the near beach uh, of Vietnam. Uh -huh. In yeah. the Delta? Near the Mekong. How many people started on your trip? Uh, can you have a six men? 160. Yeah. How many made it? Men. How many people made it ashore? How many now? Uh, now, uh, I don't know. Ambulance. 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 Ambul
Many the police are getting ambulance. They are getting a, the ambulance is coming. The police counted 153 survivors. They stood them up, set them down, counted them again, and then recounted. An hour passed. Nothing happened. The police just stood guard. The food came. The water. No one had much to say now. No one asked anymore for help. And that ambulance never came. For that old man, it had been his last voyage. In another day, the boat would be brought to shore and sold. Just down the beach in front of our motel, another Vietnamese boat was being made into a cocktail lounge. The police started moving them out, single file. How many days were you on the boat? Ten days before. Ten days on the boat? Yes, yes. You have food? Nothing. Water? Very slow, very little. Very little food? Water? Only water. No food? Nothing. Do Vietnamese officials help you? Not very well. How do they, how do you leave? Because we uh, want to try to go out. Did you pay to leave? No. We you, don't pay nothing. You pay no one? No. A half mile away, four army trucks were waiting. Do you know where they take you now? In this truck? You don't know? I cannot help you. We followed the trucks into Kuala Trunganu, the largest town in the area. They were taken to a warehouse where another 200 boat people had already been camped out for more than a week. How many people came out with you from Vietnam? Uh, we got uh, 250 people. And how many made it to Malaysia? What? How many survived? Uh, now we get only 61 person. What happened to the others? The others they died. They died? Yes. Drowned? Yes. Why did you leave Vietnam? I leave because the, the, the life is very difficult for me. Not enough to eat, you know, the food we mix with. The His name is Hai. He had been in the South Vietnamese Air Force, and after the war, he had been sent to a re-education camp. What happened to the others? Last month, 14 members of his family started their escape. Only two of them survived the trip to Malaysia. Do you have relatives or friends in the United States? Yes, I got my young, uh, my uh, older si sister in the United States now. You have a sister in the United States? Yes. Where? In Connecticut, you know. Connecticut? Yeah, Connecticut. Where, where do you live here? Where do you sleep? Where do you sleep? Yes. I sleep at the border. Back here? Yeah, back here. Would, would you show me where you sleep? Yes. Back here? Many people back here? Yes. Very dark, huh? Yeah. At night, no light? Yeah, no light. Only two These lights don't work? You sleep here? Yeah. Where, where do you sleep, hi? I sleep Show me. No, I sleep here. This is for you, huh? Yes. And two, you know, two brothers. Wood, huh? Yeah. You sleep here? Yes, yeah. Your brother sleeps here? Yes. Next to you? Yes, yes. Uh, 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 come from the survival boat. Another one of the survivors? Yes. yes. What about food? Food, you know, eat the uh, rice, you know. This part of rice uh, uh, Rice? Yeah, the rice. Some uh, uh, rice with meat, you know. How many days must this last? On every day we have two bags. Every day you get two bags? Yeah. This is enough, huh? Not, not enough. enough. No? No, not enough. Come on, walk with me, hi. Huh? No, it's no problem. Uh, no problem with the police. This is where you, where you bathe? Yes. For shower? Yes. Two spaces.
tickets? Yes, yeah, yeah, for everyone. Yes, yeah, for everyone. Is there one place for for men and another no, place no, for no, women? Not the other. We are used to, uh, together. Together. Yes. So over 200 people for a shower here. Yes. With two speakers. Yes. And your toilet facilities. Where do you go to the bathroom? No bathroom. No bathroom. Yes. Where Where do you go? Anywhere? Anywhere. Anywhere. I hope Americans will help us because we are very difficult to come here. What What do you want America to do? Now to help us to you go to the United States. Yeah. Because yeah. to help us help us to go to the United States. You think America should help you? I think so. I hope so. Why? Because now we lost everything. Yeah. America is not in Vietnam anymore. America is finished. Yes, with I Vietnam. know. That, I know that the American finished uh, coming Vietnam. Now we want to 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 come United States to walk by to walk to the with the United States, you know, government. Do you know what freedom means? Yes, I know freedom. What does freedom mean to you? In freedom, we we can go anywhere with any person, you know. No, no have a person, you know, permission. No permission. Yes. Go anywhere. Go anywhere. You can get money. You can get money to to live on the life, you know. The United States means freedom. Yes, I think so. I'm sure. Because I have been United States one year. Did you like it? Yes, I like it. Where where were you? I at the Kissler Air Force Base, you know, Mississippi River. Although he doesn't know it, this will be the next step for High and the others. 200 yards from where he sleeps is a loading dock where we found another batch of refugees who had been waiting for three days to be sent to their next location. When, when did you arrive in Malaysia? We arrived in the night of uh, 1st December, but we're handing, uh, handed on the night of uh, 3rd. The 3rd of December? Third to land. Uh -huh. land, but we arrived in um, to Malaysia on the night of uh, first. What what happened in those two days to you? Yeah, we stay on uh, the harbor. In the harbor, we cannot go in. The police stopped you? Yeah. Then what did they do to you? They want us to give money. The police wanted you to give money? Yes, to do what? To land? Yeah. To island. Yeah, to land it. Did you? Most of these people did what before? Uh, some are military family. Military family? Official family. Uh, some uh, businessmen, worker. Why did you leave? We left we live for, uh, I think, to find uh, freedom and living. Where can you find freedom? For example, in your country. United States? Yes, sir. We like that very much. Do you know where you go now? I don't know. They don't tell you where you go? Uh, yeah, here, uh, to the island. The island. From a distance, visions of a tropical paradise 30 miles out in the South China Sea. By fishing boat, it takes two and a half hours to reach Palau Badong from the Malaysian mainland. But during this monsoon season, there are often stretches of several days when you just can't get to the island. Last August, Palau Bidong was uninhabited. Now, there are more than 23,000 boat people living here, living in a makeshift shanty town, a collection of shacks and tents piled on top of each other. No photographs had ever been taken here. No film crew permitted on the island. Ours was the first. We arrived early in the afternoon with a representative of the United Nations. Over the camp loudspeaker, a list of names was being announced. Mail call, their most important link with the outside world. The UN representative, Alan Lindquist, a young American from Seattle, turned over the rest of the mail he'd brought with him and picked up the outgoing mail. 
We haven't been here for a long time. Yeah. All of this is going out. Thank God. There have been few answers to the letters written by these refugees. They think the Malaysians just don't mail them. So they saw us as a way to guarantee delivery. Ohio, Panama, Pomona, California. San Francisco, okay, uh, they all have a dress, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Texas, New Zealand, McLean, Virginia, Tulsa, Oklahoma, what are conditions like here for you and for your family? My my own condition? Oh, here. Here. I have no shelter. My family is that in Chile. My family, no, I just go with my four children. You have four children here? Yeah, family. I work for the U.S. Embassy. I'm a translator. You have enough food here for you and your four children? No, we have not enough food. What, what do you have to eat? Every day we eat dry fish and canned fish. That's all. Dry fish and canned, canned fish. fish. What no about vegetables. fresh fish in the ocean? No. Fresh fish, no fresh money. No money. But you can go out and fish? How can I do? How can I do? I see many boys fish. Yes, but I'm not a boy. I have four children to take care. And every day we, we must go to the mountain to get wood. Where, where are you from? I'm, I'm from Saigon. Well, what did you do in Saigon? I was a pharmacist. A and pharmacist? I, yes, and my husband is a, is a doctor. He's a doctor? Yes. Is your husband? Dr. Don, you saw him. Yes, he is here now. Yes. Dr. Don is a... Yes, With the spectacles. Him. Yes, I yes. met him. Well, why did you leave uh, Vietnam, uh, your, your homeland? Because I, I would like to live in a free country. So you wanted to leave to seek freedom? Yes, in freedom for, for my family, for my children. In which country? Uh, in the States. Why the United States? Um, <laughs> it is the country of freedom first, and my family are in the States. Do you think the people of the United States will accept Vietnamese refugees? Um, in certain cases. I think, I think that they will accept. In certain cases? Yeah. Which cases? Uh, those who have families there, and uh, those who have worked for the Americans, and those who have been uh, in the army. What about the others who have never worked for Americans, who don't have families there? What happens to them? I think that the, the Americans will, will make a choice and receive them all. We'll those those who have, haven't been accepted by other countries. The United States will take all. Yes. You really believe that? I hope. What's this down here? It's a water pump? No, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah. Oh. Hello, sir. Hello. Will you kindly to send this letter for me, please? We're, to? To France. France? Okay. Do you have these relatives? Uh, yes. Yeah. Your relatives in, in France? France? Okay. Is that where you want to go? I want you to go to the America. You want to go to America? Okay. Do you have relatives in America? Yes, I have uh, my aunt. Where, aunt. Where does she live? She lives in New York. In New York City? Uh, excuse me, you, you call my sister. For your sister? Yeah, my sister. Your sister's in San Diego? Yeah, yeah, San Diego. Okay, I'll take these letters for you. Thank you very much. Okay? Thank you very much. Good. This water just runs out, huh? This, you drink this water? Yes, Jimmy. But it smells. Yeah. <laughs> this you showed me before is your, this is your medicine, your medicine chest. This is, this is all of the medicine you have. 
over 22,000 people, and this is it for 22,000 people. A few jars of pills. It's not enough. What do, what do you have in here? Acupuncture. Do you treat many patients this way with acupuncture? We don't have an anesthetic. Don't have any doctor to relieve a pain. And uh, we have many women uh, who are many pregnant women, too. Yeah. Huh? We have many delivery here, sir. Many deliveries. How many? And, uh, how many uh, uh, children have been born in the camp? Oh, no, about uh, now, right now, about 50, 50 babies. 50, 50 babies already. Yes. Is this where you deliver babies? Yeah. Right here. Yeah. Right here. Well, doctor, explain this to me. How many, did you escape? Oh, I tried many times. I had failed and lost money too, you know, many times. At the end, this time I succeeded. <laughs> How much does it cost for one person to leave Vietnam? At least uh, about uh, two, uh, five uh, gold seat, Vietnamese gold seat. That's about... Uh, five uh, tails of gold? Yeah. That's about five tiles. That's about two thousand dollars. Yes, yes. That's about two thousand dollars for one person to live. Yes. Who gets the money? Government officials? No. No. Uh, our own money. You know? to go no. To the, uh, who, who, who do you pay the money to? The ship owner. The, the communist ship. government? For the no. Ship owner. The boat. The boat, the boat owner. owner. Yes. And the organizers. You know? Uh -huh. Because of, there is many chains, many, many links. Are, Many links in the yeah, chain. Yeah, in the chain. How do you get from, say, Saigon to the coast when you have to go past a police yeah. checkpoint? Just that you must disguise. Disguise? Yes. Yeah, what about like papers? Workmen. What about papers? Oh. That you make the false. Ah, uh, the organizer makes the false papers. Yeah. When the Americans evacuated Vietnam in April yeah. 1975, yeah. 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 why didn't you leave with them? Oh, nobody, you know, we could not contact her. We could not have a contact her. We, uh, American. I mean, uh, you were a lieutenant colonel, senior officer. No, even you worked at the hospital. Many, many high-ranking officers were left without any help, you know. Each refugee will tell their story over and over again. First to a UN representative, later to delegations from different countries that might be willing to accept them. Most we met want to go to the United States. This family's boat was attacked by pirates from Thailand. An all too familiar story for many of the boat people. This, your boat was attacked by Thai pirates, is that right? Now, let's, I have two children, and my sister-in-law has four children there, but now no father. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, four sons uh, were killed by the parents. They were killed by, they were tied? Yeah, they, they the were tied, the hand tied, and uh, uh, killed by the, you uh, dumb, huh, sir? Yeah. yeah, they were killed by, uh, they killed by nine. By nine. They tried to cut the, my mother's son the, the ear and kill and they threw in the sea. Twenty people were killed. Another 15 wounded. Two 16-year-old girls were raped. Except for what they wore, all of their clothes were taken, as well as the rest of their possessions. This woman had worked at the American PX in Saigon for seven years. What is she going to do now? What does she want to do? Now that the husband is killed, he's just the, he's just, he's just, he's just so alone, so, she has no one but her children. Mm -hmm. just, all her children are still too small and too young. She 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 would like to go to USA. Mm -hmm. She needs your help to take her and her family with her, her mother and her sister-in-law to the state. Before the day is over, another hundred refugees have been interviewed who want to make the U.S. their new home. As night settles in, a Malaysian gunboat circles the island. 
While on shore, people write letters to friends and relatives, letting them know where they are and pleading for help. In the morning at first light, small wood fires are lit to cook the morning rice. Outside of where we slept, there were already more people waiting to talk to us. What happened with this woman? Uh, uh, this woman said that she has no dress and has no money, and the weather now is very cold. She wants to meet her uh, daughter and son in India, and then go to America. Ask her why she wants to go to the United States. She said that in Vietnam, the life is very hard, so that she wants to go to America. Because in Vietnam, we have no free. No freedom? Yes. She thinks she will be free in the United States? Maybe, sir. She says she wants to meet her son. Has she talked to the man from the United Nations? No. She did not know how to talk with. She should talk to him next. No. Alan? This is a woman who has only the, the, the clothes on her back. When she has children, I think, in, in India, she says. What's the, what's the future plan? What's the outlook plan? How much time will she have to spend in this camp? Now, most of the national delegations that are accepting people, even after they've accepted them, there is four or five, six months waiting. So uh, we can't promise anyone that they'll be off here very quickly. She could be here for a year. That's right. I'm afraid that's true. But for us, it was only a day. And before we left, the people of Palau Bidong asked us if they could send a message to the people of the United States. We, three members of the, Viet uh, the Vietnamese Refugee Committee here, in, on behalf of 23,000 uh, refugees, we would like to give this message. It's only for humanitarian reasons, because we are living in very terrific conditions, and we hope that we will get the, the, all the help of the people and the government of the United States. Please help us to survive so that one day we can live in freedom again as you all. The United States are our, our only hope. given personal messages to take back, and at almost every turn there was always someone with another letter. In all, we collected almost a thousand pieces of mail. And even as we left, there was just one more. Southeast Asia has become an international crossroads for refugees. More than a quarter of a million Cambodians and Laotians, as well as Vietnamese, have fled their countries. But this mass migration might still have gone unnoticed without the appearance of the boat people's biggest boat, the Hai Hong. Thailand, Indonesia, and Singapore turned this ship away. But early in November, Malaysia agreed to let the Hai Hong, with two and a half thousand Vietnamese on board, anchor offshore. By the time we boarded her on December 6, a thousand refugees had already been airlifted to Canada and Western Europe. But her decks and hold were still jammed with a thousand more, most of them waiting to be interviewed by the American delegation. The Hai Hong is no longer alone on the high seas. Off Hong Kong and Manila, two similar ships are waiting, each carrying more than 2,000 refugees. Life on board these ships is barely life at all. 
There's very little food or privacy, no medicine, no alcohol, no cigarettes. There's only seawater for cooking and washing. For shade, there are canvas awnings. And on the ship's menu, east meets west. Baked beans on rice for six straight weeks. Why is it taking so long to help these people? The man in the middle of the tragedy is Malaysia's powerful home minister, Ghazali bin Shafi. Mr. Minister, what about the refugees who are now on the high hog, who've been on there for days? Why haven't they been transferred to camps? Because we find it uh, unnecessary to transfer to camps, because the nearest camps would be on the east, uh, on the east coast. Um, and um, the, the processing for these people were carried out very successfully by the Canadians, the French, and the Germans. But that process by the United States takes so long. Oh, please, hurry up then. I mean, you know, I mean, if you really want to get rid of them, do it quickly. You know, you have a reputation as, as a very humane man. I think the whole nation is. Then how can you turn these people we away? We haven't turned them away. The Malaysian I'm... gunboats, is that the policy to turn the ships away? Look, there is no policy about inhuman treatment for people who have come to this country. But like every country in the world, we have a policy to prevent illegal immigrants from coming to our country. And you regard the Vietnamese as, as illegal, illegal immigrants. immigrants? As simple as that. You're not happy with the role of the United States? But right now, I think it is somewhat short. You see, you call them refugees. Yet, do you treat them as refugees? We do not think so. Because if you treat them, them as refugees, you do not have criteria for selecting them into the country. Because the only criteria is that he's a refugee. But right now, the United States have a number of you know, uh, <clears throat> questions to ask. And I know of there are people there who are 12 months in one of our camps who simply couldn't fit into any of the uh, criteria provided for by the United States government. Therefore, if you provide criteria, you cannot regard them as refugees. How are these Vietnamese refugees being processed? Each has already been interviewed by the United Nations, which has steered them to the nation of their choice. Now they're being taken to nearby gunboats for an interview with the American delegation, all volunteers from religious and charitable groups. But as Minister Shafi observed, many may be called, but few are chosen. How many years of school did you have? Uh, yeah. This is Tran Chan Kwa. Before the fall of Saigon, he worked as an assistant manager for an American shipping company. His wife is a seamstress. They have distant relatives in the United States. A good prospect for immigration? Not necessarily. Refugees who want to go to the United States are divided by Congress into four distinct categories. In one of the refugee camps, I discuss these categories and their impact with the director of the American delegations, Galen Beery. Uh, the four categories are fairly well uh, outlined by the U.S. Congress. Uh, basically, those who have close family relatives in the States, uh, people who work for the American government, are high risk, and everyone else. So category one would be? People who have close relatives in the United States. And category two? People who work for the American government. Three? People who would be considered high-risk status. What's a high-risk? Uh, let's say someone who was a colonel in the Army before and has undergone three years of re-education. And category four? Everyone else. If you're a refugee, you really don't want to be in category four. As a refugee, I sometimes think I would just leave without regard to what category I was in. <laughs> we saw out on the out on the high hog one refugee with his wife and his children. 
he speaks English. In Vietnam during the war, he was the assistant manager for an American shipping company. This man has two uncles in the United States. Where does he go? What are his chances of getting to the United States? Basically, there's a lot of people come out of Vietnam on the basis that they have relatives in the United States. Cousins, second cousins, aunts and uncles whose family relationships may be a little questionable. The fact that he worked with an American shipping company would be one thing that he would be considered on, but it would basically be up to more solid criteria than that. If he does have two uncles in the United States. He is not qualified for the United States if he has nothing else outstanding. Here's another example. A woman whose husband is already in the United States. With her now is her mother, father, and brother. She's told that if she goes to the United States by herself, she has a good chance of getting there in a reasonable amount of time. But if she insists on going as a family unit, She's going to face a long series of delays. The woman would be in a higher category because her husband's in the United States. But if she wants to go with the rest of her family... She could wait until they are ready to go. Which could be... Several months. Put it to them this way. They have to consider their desire to stay together. But they also got to consider the children. <laughs> But if they don't want to make separate applications, they don't have to. Tell them that. Tell them to make up their mind now, okay? You want to make one application tomorrow? No, I don't. Put him family. Tell them to make up their minds. There are a lot of people waiting. So one application is made. The family stays together. But the daughter's chance for an early trip to the United States to rejoin her husband is gone. Once the delegation is finished with them, the refugees must then be interviewed by the immigration authority on yet another boat. The questioning begins all over again. You swear that all you're about to say will be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you, God. You do swear? By nightfall, when we left the Hai Hong, Fran Chan Kwa and his family were still waiting their turn with the immigration officer. The Canadians, the French, and the West Germans have taken their quotas and gone. The American process is slow, but the delegation has its hands tied, and as Galen Beery points out, the refugees are still coming, and they're not all category one, two, or three. What about the kinds of people who are coming out now? Are you getting a broad cross-section, or do they seem to fit in categories? I've run into everything. Let's say a lieutenant again, who would have been in jail for three years. Uh, under the so-called re-education. I've run into housewives who said, look, there is not enough food there to feed my children. I've talked to teenagers who said I did not want to be conscripted to fight against the Cambodians. I've had children who just jumped on a boat to go out for a lark. You mean without their parents? Yes. <laughs> just up and left. What happens to them? We have a big problem with unaccompanied children. A child who arrives here while he may be accepted by the United States as sort of a humanitarian basis, then you run into somewhat of a legal situation. If the child ends up in an American home, for example, and breaks his leg, uh, who signs the authorization for the doctor to do an operation? So until we can find your brother in the United States, or until we can find a way to, to take you to the United States legally, people who could act as foster mother and father, you will be staying here in the camp. You really have an incredible amount of power in these people's lives. I mean, they, they must... I wonder what's in, in their thinking when they see you arrive in camp, how, how they must regard you. Basically, everyone waits for the interview. And I have a feeling there's an awful lot of sleepless nights spent before and afterwards. But all we... What we can do is just basically uh, interpret the criteria as best we can on individual cases. 
along, uh, what is it, Talmudic lines, getting very fine distinctions sometimes, and uh, hope for the best in each case. The hard part, and this is what is happening as the program is changing, is that many times you just have to say, I'm very sorry you don't seem to qualify for the American program. Uh, hopefully you will be considered by the United States again or some other country. In the meantime, you're here for a long wait. Could be six months, could be a year. We would suggest you help in camp organizations, study English or study French, and uh, have faith. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir. Does this bus go to Madison Street? Madison Street. Madison Street. Madison Street. What is this? Is this a chair? No, it's not a chair. What is this? It's a camera. Very good. Very good. Very nice. The refugee problem is not uh, not tapering off. In fact, it's it's increasing. We're getting more and more refugees coming out of Vietnam. What what do you see as as the future? What's going to happen? I really have no idea. It's it's more and more difficult to predict the future. When I came, um, I was alone. I walked in the office and asked where the refugee affairs section was, and they pointed at me and said, "You're it." And. Uh, we now have seven Americans and about 15 Malaysians and uh, three or four people from the embassy. And we're just not sure how many refugees are arriving, where they're going to arrive, or what the future of this all is. How do you keep up with the numbers? The numbers that are arriving? Keep interviewing as fast as we can. Actually, the whole family went out in one time, that's right. But the, uh, somehow the information would uh, spread, I mean, uh, leaking, you know. So the trip <coughs> was known by the communists, so he had to escape himself and left <coughs> all the other people behind. We get many cases this way where the, let's say, a family starts out with the boat, but in Vietnam there's, the, the police check families traveling together, so let's say a father will take two children and go one way, the wife will take three children and go the other way, and try and meet at a rendezvous, and one group for some reason is delayed, the fishing boat, the uh, captain looks at his watch, it's five o'clock in the morning, it's getting light, they have to leave, they leave, and the other family remains. Sometimes they escape a few days later, sometimes it takes three or four months. And they end up in Malaysia, Singapore, Philippines, uh, all over the map. Delegates from those nations and others met in Geneva last month for a special UN conference on the boat people. The head of the American delegation was Under Secretary of State David Newsom. Is it the policy of the government of the United States to consider the exodus of people from Vietnam as an American problem? We feel that those who were directly associated with us in Vietnam have now left Vietnam at an earlier uh, refugee migration. And I was in Malaysia a week ago. I met people who came out last week from Vietnam who say they worked for the United States well, government, who were associated with the United States states government who worked for American companies they're still coming out we don't uh, <clears throat> we don't deny that there may be still people coming out who have been associated with us but we feel that this present wave of refugees many of them of ethnic Chinese origin coming out because of economic uh, <laughs> changes within Vietnam are an international problem not an American not an American problem you may have uh, you may have ended the war in Vietnam, but can you really leave your responsibility? After all, you're president. Only at the last uh, uh, anniversary of human rights mentioned this. Very specifically, on the basis of human rights, you should give special treatment to the question of receiving uh, Vietnamese refugees. Now, who am I to tell the great nation of the United States what to do? Surely. It has to be consequential to the idea of human rights by Mr. Carter. And to me, it's so logical that if you pay special attention in your own speech, in your own words, that you must uh, receive this 
uh, the, 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 the great country, United States, should treat these people as refugees in the United States, then translate it into action. At least give this particular assurance to those countries involved. You see, there is Thailand, there is Malaysia, there is Indonesia, there is Singapore. I think even the Philippines are exposed to this. That there should be no residual problem with refugees. That is the point. You see, you are taking them out as quickly as you could, according to your bureaucratic practices. I mean, that's the, that is the way it's being done. Fine. But nobody is now is certain what's going to happen to those people who do not come within the categories of your immigration arrangements. They're still refugees from your viewpoint, but you're not prepared to accept them. I mean, put yourself in the place of the United States. Would you want a flood of refugees? Oh, certainly not. But the, the, the point I'm making is, for so long as there is still this promise of hope to go to the United States, they will continue to leave. Uh, Vietnam. How many? Vietnam, Cambodia, Laos as well. That's right. And how I many people know. are you talking about? Oh, I, I'm talking in terms of millions. But uh, within a certain time, uh, uh, time frame, of course. I'm not suggesting in two, three months. You know, but for so long as the door is open, for so long as, uh, you know, we, you, you, you would uh, receive them as refugees, and I think they will come. But the problem is, there is no time frame. I mean, you can't say to the Vietnamese refugees, okay, it's uh, February now, and uh, we will accept no more until March. And then March, you start the escaping on the boats again. Well, this is, that is why I had suggested this idea of having an island, or Guam, or an island belonging to a third country. We could help to be the the staging post, not the processing post. As long as it's a temporary problem. As long as the problem does not become residual to Malaysia. This is the point. In other words, you know, we do not take the, the crumbs of those people whom we have taken away. You, you can see our problem now, don't you? I mean, if you have a selective yardstick, and surely those who do not go through the net will be left behind, and what do we do with them? So here in Malaysia, the refugees wait. Wait for the day when their names will be posted on the camp bulletin board. These are the lucky ones. This is Malaysia's transit camp, last stop for those refugees who have been accepted for immigration. Since 1975, the United States has taken over 200,000 Vietnamese refugees. Now our annual refugee quota is 50,000. But that's for all of Indochina. And there are that many Vietnamese in Malaysian camps alone. And more are on their way. We are a nation of immigrants. More than half the people in this country are related to those who pass through these great halls here on Ellis Island. The old civics books told us all about the melting pot and our diversity and how great we were because of it. Now the rest of the world is watching us to see what we do about the boat people. There are precedents. We open our doors to the Hungarians and to more than a million Cubans since Castro took over that island. Some are asking, why not the Vietnamese? Will they add to swollen welfare rolls? Of those here already, fewer than 5% are unemployed. For us, the Vietnam War is over. Like it or not, we lost that war. But while there, we sold many of its people a way of life, an attitude. And now they are the losers, and we face a moral dilemma. Out there is the Statue of Liberty, with its inscription, Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free. It says nothing about Category 1, 2, 3, or Category 4. For CBS Reports, I'm Ed Bradley.